All right, YouTube. So today we're going to be uh, doing some good stuff today. This is going to be a good video. Uh, it's going to be interesting. Stick around for the whole thing. Interesting. Uh, we're working on the uh, truck number two that's been giving us problems with the whole entire pushing air out of the coolant system, as you see in my previous videos. Um, doing the uh, combustion leak detector test using different fluids. Uh, it's just been a pain. So uh, today is going to be kind of like the final hoorah test we can do. That's what we're going to try to do today. I'm over here at uh, Buddy's house. Uh, highway behind me is going to be kind of loud today. It's like I-85, but it ain't. You know, it's, it's just a small highway, but people like to drive like crazy down it. So <clears throat> what we're doing, we got some CO2 today. Picked this thing up the other day. We got a regulator. Don't know how much pressure that's going to be able to put in there. Uh, got a hose. Going to an end. Um, and this is one thing I recommend doing on anybody's truck is you got the little uh, floor blower here and what I got my other truck you just take the, the this part off this is you know quarter inch normal uh, fitting so you take that thing off and screw a quick connect on there and that way if you're anywhere you know you can back feed through the you know if you want to air up a truck like see so you got air compressors going bad you want to back feed you can back feed through the red hose here um, you can back feed and fill the tanks up that way to get you off the highway. If you have a glad hand, you know, another truck that you can hook up to or, or air compressor or whatever. But when you hook to a trailer, you really can't do all that. As far as I know, you can't. Somebody will probably comment below on how to do it the other way. But uh, if you put one of these bad boys in there, you know, you hook your normal hose up to it. And you can fill up your uh, air tanks to get your brakes to come off without having to cage them. You know, if you have a compressor issue. Anyways, we're going to swap this into there, and I'll get back to you. All right, so got it all swapped out. Like I said, it's just an easy, it just screws right in there. It's no big deal. And the benefit of this, too, is you, you know, you put the other part of the quick connect in here, and you can still use your blowgun. Usually, this is the part that goes bad. It leaks and crap. So you can swap it out real easy, and you can, you know, throw this part back you know back in there and store it a little easier like getting hooked and stuff and you can use like whatever you want tire chuck if i put tire chucks in there before and fill up you know little tires or whatever you know, at the house or it just kind of gives you like onboard air pretty neat setup really we'll put this uh in there for now but truck's been sitting for a good while truck's actually been sitting for like three or four weeks um, longer than we really wanted to, but <clears throat> get these cars not to be driving by. I'll see if we got any pressure on this thing or not. See if you guys can hear it. But squeeze the hose and see. I don't think there's any pressure on it. Oh yeah. Can you hear that? It still had pressure on it. After three weeks of sitting, not firing up. It's always a good thing. Oh. Bottom of the cap. Got some crud and stuff on there. What we're gonna do today is hopefully test this thing out. You kind of sit up there. Pretty much, we're going to back feed all the air tanks with CO2. We're going to back feed all the air tanks with CO2 and uh, see how that goes because I'll show you in this test. So, here's the, the kit we're using. Uh, combustion it does it does do gasoline and diesel engines I don't know if you can say that or not but uh, I'd say it's a good kit I haven't got the I haven't got the fail on this one <laughs> I don't know if it's a good kit or not I feel highly that I got combustion fluid in there but uh, that's what we're using we're listening to the top chamber today 
And I'll show you how this stuff's gonna react to it all, but it's nice and blue. And I got it barely coming out of there. So I'll just kind of blow it up. Like it's not even, it's not even, you know, it's just the gas. And I'll suck it up and. So you can see how it's just turning. That CO2 works really good. Changes that uh, fluid about instantly. So that's kind of the plan. Is we're gonna, you know, clear this thing out. We're gonna hook this to the truck. We'll do that right now. And I'm gonna back feed the truck. We're gonna back feed the truck with um, CO2. Fill the whole entire air system up with CO2. It's gonna work out pretty good. Yes, yeah, so we got it going. Um, we got our flow and I can hear it. There's the gauge. I think this thing said about 60 pounds or something. We're probably gonna crank that up a little bit, but. Let me go ahead and uh, I'm gonna empty this thing out. As you can see, it's nice and yellow. It, it really works. It detects that CO2 really good. I'm gonna empty that out and put some new fluid in. Okay, so it's getting a little dark now. But uh, here's where we're at. The whole entire, this steel right here. I ended up going back the other way for now because I didn't have that fitting. Because when you back feed that, it only did one tank because there's a check valve. Good news is, check valve's working. But it only fill up, let's see here. When I was up here, it's only doing the top one. It's dark. I know it's dark. Let's see if I put the light on for you. So it's only doing the uh, primary and the secondary was completely empty. So how I got running that is I uh, took that fitting and went and got some more fittings, took this line off the compressor itself. As you can see, I got that line off there. You know, right here's the line. Got some fittings hooked to the, to the air hose back to the CO2 tank. And so we got, what was that about? Should be about 60 PSI in this thing. Yeah, probably about 60 PSI or so. 60 PSI in it. And uh, I don't know if it's enough for the suspension. No, the suspension's still, suspension's still dead. But that's, that's fine. So we got to work with tonight. Uh, yeah, here's the tester. So we got the tester done. Filled back up with the blue goodness. And I've had this cap off, you know. I haven't fired the truck up yet. I haven't done nothing. This truck's been sitting for three, <clears throat> three weeks. I had pressure on it when I took the cap off, as you've seen. So. Let's see if we got the same little Last time I was pushing air through it itself pretty uh, regularly. I don't know about now. But it is blue. It's not as much air as it was before. Sense. All right. All right, in order to show.
show you this how it's all uh like I got the air tank right here. Let's see if I can get this light set up somewhere, but so there's a uh, fluid nice and uh greenish blue. Trying to make a mess. supply so as you can see that stuff is loaded with co2 which is um you know this confirms my whole entire thing and i got the uh, i ended up feeding the compressor and all that while it was running so it's the operating pressure and uh airbag air suspension all that's working right now so uh, you know definitely a way to test if you think you have an air contamination issue like a bad compressor or whatever uh, CO2 backfill on this thing worked great. I mean, that would tell you straight up if it's uh, an issue, so. All right, so I got the truck uh, running now in the background over there, and uh, it's gotten dark on us, daylight savings time, you know, all that fun stuff's going on right now, so days are short. Luckily, it's warm today, but um, I'll give you kind of updates going on. I hooked uh, the tanks are full of CO2. Uh, when we test the CO2, it's yellow, it turns this fluid yellow. I had the tester in the coolant reservoir with the truck running because it wasn't doing nothing before. It was just staying in the normal blue. And I got running now with it on there and it's blowing air like it, like it was before in other videos as you've seen. Um, so in theory, if it's an air leak into the coolant system, it should do uh, turn yellow. And if it's a combustion gas, it should turn uh, green. Because uh, diesel, and that's what the book says, it turns green instead of yellow. So kind of using that dual color part of this whole entire test to my advantage. Um, but that's how it's going. We'll walk over here. It's dark. green than a blue or a yellow so so the conclusion you know kind of is uh, I'm gonna pull this thing down like everybody's told me to do it's either a head gasket or a cracked head or whatever it is but uh, I mean this is the last test this is like the only test I could think of that I came up with that would uh, guarantee me that it's not air related uh, I could test it out so anyways uh, hit that like button if you like the video always trying to put some content on here to help some fellow truckers out uh, Or automotive guys, whatever it is, but uh hit that subscribe button. I'll see you in the next video